And we don't always do this. Yeah. You know, we don't always, we like our game, yeah. our NBC game, but it's not always the best game. Yeah. We've been doing it a little more lately, though. Because the games have been good. They've been damn good. And I think yesterday, this was one of those games where it was down to the end, great finish. I think this was the best game of the day, right? Best result, best finish of the day. I think so. Eagles was pretty good. Yeah. We'll the drama with, of this, the quarterbacks yes. playing. I agree with you. So let's start with that. On Sunday Night Football, the Chiefs came back and beat the Chargers when it looked like with about three minutes to go, or I guess it was right around two minutes to go, yeah. Justin Herbert was going to be the game-winning hero, bring your team back from a deficit quarterback. Uh, and all those fans in SoFi Stadium were booing because they were all Chiefs fans. I know, it is. I do feel bad for the I Chargers when it comes to that aspect, no doubt. But it was Patrick Mahomes yeah. who brought his team back, which should not be a surprise at this point. He's 13-7 and seven in his career when trailing at halftime, so no halftime deficit is a big deal. In fact, a deficit down in the final minute is not a big deal, too. Uh, that's what stood out to me the most. It was like, yes. It was like Justin Herbert, good for him. I was like, this was a good, even though they lost, it was like, you start to see some of the things that we saw before. Yeah, the right. dink and dunk was gone. Keenan Allen it was, was big time plays. Definitely, but at the end of the day, it's Patrick Mahomes making those Patrick Mahomes plays that maybe no one else in football can make. Right no, now. no, I, he's he's on fire right now. He's playing awesome, and I, I think you know you've heard, been hearing me say the last few weeks. I think he's playing as good as any year of his career. Is every bit as good as his MVP season, his second league in the NFL, his first as a starter. Uh, he's just special, and it's just. It, it's he's one of those guys that yeah when the Chargers score a touchdown with 146 left you just go damn well that's too much time like it it's gonna have to be something miraculous for you guys to win even though you just took the lead with four minutes and you're up by four points it's gonna take you something miraculous still <laughs> to win the football game it's like maybe they'll score fast enough to give you some time to right. come back and or maybe did. he'll just throw one of those trick shots or be you know tied up and try to throw a 20 yard out route with four guys hanging on that's what that's what you're hoping for because like it's almost inevitable at that point and then really it's the the chiefs I mean Ahmed we were kind of waxing poetically at the end of the football game it's just like they thrive for those moments it seems like when they're like Hey, we're down 20. We're down 17. We're down a touchdown with a, like it's like they're almost like, "Hey, let's play football now." And I it, it's hard not to root for them because of it. It it is. It's it's infectious. And just the way they battle, again, they're the toughest, you know, passing team I've ever seen in the history of the league. They're not soft or finesse by any stretch of the imagination. Again, just the adjustments they make in the second half. You know, we were talking about that last night, right, Ahmed? I mean, first half, Chargers throwing the ball around a little bit. They're pushing the ball down the field. Second half, they can't do jack diddly shit on until the drive you're talking about. I mean, we got they were shut out mm -hmm. by that defense until really what I thought looked like offense pass interference on Keenan Allen on the big third and 18 throw. So, But th that's where I just the, – the Chiefs are so amazing that way. And then even the adjustments at halftime – you know, that we, we also joked out because it's Andy Reid, and you know, there they are last week against the, the Jaguars, and you go, man, they ran the ball. This is great. And they start off the game last night, and they're running the ball, and you're like, man, this new Chiefs element, and then they forget about it. And you're like, what? You're running for 10 yards a carry, and you stopped running. And they come out in the second half, and it's like somebody grabbed Andy Reid and shook him and was like, here's a, here's a Mr. Goodbar. You know, get your hangry out, and we got to run the ball, Andy. And then he was like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, you're right, we do. And they come out running the ball. And they just they kind of control the whole second half, even though they dug themselves in a hole in the first half. And uh, they're just a tough, resilient team. And, and to your point, he's magical. He just He's magical. He's 14-0 in his career now in road division games. That's he has insane. not lost a, a division insane. game on the road best by any quarterback since the 1970 merger so he is awesome and now he is the odds on mvp favorite yeah minus 155 he's ahead of josh allen jalen hurts and Tua. all of them are actually tied at plus 600 and so it's patrick's trophy to lose now at this point which is crazy we're week 11 here and it seems almost like a foregone conclusion i don't know what those other guys would have to do to catch him at this point. I think Patrick would have to just fall on his face. Well, yeah, he'd probably have to have some games, maybe like we're seeing from Josh Allen a little bit, where he just does some dumb things and throws a few interceptions and all that. But, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I'm with you. I think when you, you know, again, argue the fact of no Tyree kill, the adjustment to that. And not even that. There were no Juju in this game. Exactly. No well, McCole Hardman. No, but that's that's what's amazing about them. It's just we, we don't even care. We kind of just, just, you know – just go up. Oh, well, we still expect him to make great throws and great plays and throw for 300 yards. That's where he's gotten. That's why he's he's already a first ballot Hall of Famer. But and I would agree with your assessment there. 
that you know his he's definitely in the league for the the MVP voting. Mm-hmm. You know, and the way Allen has played the last few weeks, Hertz hasn't you know done anything extraordinary. Tua's the stats are always going to be good with Tua. You know, again, I don't think he's in the class of this, but his stats are going to keep him in this. Um, but yeah, I, I would go with Mahomes there too. But then Chris Jones at the end of the football game, him making plays, Ahmed. The Chiefs are the just a battle tested, tough football team, and uh, they just I, I can't say enough positive things about them. Got a little bit of a running game, Isaiah Pacheco, the first Kansas City running back with 100 or more rushing yards since Week Four of last season. Is that something that sticks? It you sticks. Think? It, it, I think it's going to stick. I mean, I thought it would have stuck a little earlier in the first half last night. Yeah, but I think that's why they like he's the starter now. You know, I, I, you know, like we talked, well, you weren't here last week, but last week we kind of, I, on Monday was kind of hitting on Turks and you were, yeah, thank you. Yeah, you were, yeah, yep, yep. Nice and tan. (laughs) But yeah, that was one of the things he does give them another element of toughness that we're talking about. And I think that's, it is real. He's a guy that, you know, defenses really legitimately have to worry about it. He's not a space runner. So that's where it's different, too. They can call some plays and go, hey, let's just go between the tackles, and he'll find the seam, and he'll smash it in there. And even though it's a gain of three, maybe with Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, with Isaiah Pacheco and the way he runs, it's a gain of six. And there's a difference there. And then, you know, you couple that with Travis Kelsey and what he does in the past game. Well, yeah. and It's just uh, it got a special combination of a lot of things there. In well, Kansas that's City. the thing, too. As much as we compliment Patrick Mahomes, able to do it with whatever wide receivers out there, I don't think he'd probably be able to do the same thing without a guy like Travis Kelsey. Right. 115 yards in this game. Three touchdowns. Seems like when they needed a big play, he was getting that big play. And he was matched up with Derwin James. And that's not an easy task for, I mean, maybe it was for Travis Kelsey. But for most tight ends, no, that would not nothing. be an easy, easy yeah. task. I mean, we're getting to the point, and they asked Chris Jones about this. Rodney right, did about right. Travis Kelsey, and yeah. Chris Jones had a good answer. He was like, "You know, I don't want to disrespect anything. You know, Shannon Sharp back in the day, and Rob Gronkowski, but man, when you look at Travis Kelsey and what he's able to do, especially this year without those weapons around him, I mean, we're we're talking all time tight end here, aren't we? I, definitely, definitely. We're, uh, another, I would. I mean, like, like I said with Mahomes, his first ballot Hall of Famer. I think Chris Jones is the first ballot Hall of Famer in my opinion. I mean, they got three of them on the team. But I, I think Kelsey – I think what's amazing about Kelsey is just that we're getting into a part of a career where you start to see guys usually start to slow down or go the wrong way, and he's played his best football the last two years. And I think it's – Again, no no disrespect to the Shannon Sharps of the world. Or I've never seen anything like this in the past game. Never. He's he's the best pass catching tight end I've ever seen in the history of football. You know, Gronk would be not far off of that for me. And of course we know Gronk, it's just a different style of a tight end yeah. with his blocking and all that. But I think these are the two guys of the era. And, you know, yeah, it, it, it's not only – it's an amazing combination, one, because, yeah, they got an offensive coordinator and they know how to use him and he's a great talent. But then when you couple that with Mahomes when he leaves the pocket or does anything that way, Kelsey just – he grew up playing football in the backyard. He's got great feel for like, oh, wait, he's running this way. I see this guy running this way. Let me stop and find the hole here. Oh, wait, this guy stopped and, you know, Mahomes stopped. Wait, I see a hole over here. Let me just kind of shuffle over there and get in the hole and he finds me. So that's where they're special too. It's like you stop them and okay, great, but then backyard football comes into play and you don't stop them. Um, it was the second time in three weeks too, I feel like as we were watching the game, they, there was more man-to-man in the football game. Now, I, I think people have gotten to the point, and I, I don't disagree with this approach of what the Chargers did last night, that you just can't play, sit back, take away the big play defense. You know, we're seeing that. And, you know, I said to you at one point, which they did, ran at the end of the football game, the game-winning touchdown, I said, Kansas City, oddly enough, has got to get back to their man-to-man plays that you used to call early on in Mahomes' Uh, career when teams were still not scared of the defense and we'll play the man and double this guy or whatever and they would cross you and pick you and get to some of those plays and I felt like they got to some of those plays at the end of the football game why didn't Derwin get his hands on Travis Kelsey yeah I don't know I don't know I I, I don't know I'd like to watch that you know a little more close to at, at times too when you're in the red zone like that right and you know you are in a situation where it's man to man the other thing that can that can play into maybe not wanting to be too aggressive is just like, well, if I do miss him at the line of scrimmage and he runs a seam route, I mean, it's, it's touchdown. Like It's going to be an easy pitch and catch. Right. So that would be the only thing I can think of. But, yeah, that was one of the few plays all night we saw, we saw him not get his hands on him. 
Addy M27 wants to give a shout out to another maybe emerging star for the Chiefs. He says Patrick Mahomes is the biggest equalizer in the sport, but how about Nick Bolton? He's really in this top 10 linebacker conversation. He had a game high 14 tackles in the game, had a forced fumble and had that game ceiling interception. Yes, he, he listen, he's a he flies around. You I mean, like you liked him coming out of I, college. Yeah, I did. Oh, I, I mean, I I like I have a, a crush on Kansas City in the way they play because they have a bunch of guys that you know we've talked about with some other teams where they they just fly around and they bring it. They have no regard for their body. And Nick Bolton is is perfect that way. He is, and he was all over the field last night. He did some dumb things too. Had the late hit out of bounds on Justin Herbert oh, that we yeah. sat there. Yeah. Had the face mask in the end zone there where you held on the guy's face mask for like seven seconds. Um, but, yeah, uh, he he is. He's he's your modern-day NFL linebacker, a guy that's kind of a thumper in the run game but has great speed, sideline to sideline, the screens, pass coverage, all that. He's really good. And yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a really good overall football team. It, you know, again, I, I know that the uh, Kansas City, to me, over the last three weeks, four weeks, they're the best team in football, in my opinion. I, I would take, if they played the Eagles tomorrow, I would take Kansas City to win that game. So we'll talk about the Eagles next, but I want to say that I don't think the Chargers are done. Yeah. They're 5-5 five and five right now. Yep. Probably not what they want to be. They have some injuries. Yes, they do. But, I mean, that was a game where they easily could have won, right, if Mahomes doesn't do the Mahomes magic. No they doubt. Were in a game, and they were in a game last week against the 49ers. Yeah. We think the 49ers could be around until the final Sunday of the year. 100%. So uh, the Chargers, they're not done yet. No, they're not. I, there's a lot of positives about the Chargers. They they need to get those receivers healthy, and hopefully Mike Williams isn't out too long. Yeah. You know, again, for the second week in a row with the Chargers, we saw them come out, push the ball down the field, and for the second week in a row, we saw them not do anything in the second half of a football game. Now again, I know that you know. To your point, they played really good teams, and this is tough matchups. Now, I I wouldn't be. I picked the 49ers and the Chiefs to be in the Super Bowl, so I wouldn't be shocked, right? I mean, they're they're both good teams, but yes, I'm not giving up on them. The one thing I've liked about the Chargers is they have shown some toughness here as of late. Yeah, and I do I do respect that. Eckler's running the ball a little bit, you know. Their run defense, yeah, it's still not perfect, but. They're fighting and, and trying to stop. And with their schedule, Cardinals, Raiders, Dolphins, Titans, hey, it's going to be tough. But there's no team that's just going to totally outclass them. I'm not giving up on them. And they do get in the playoffs, and they're healthy with the Joey Bosa and Derwin James and everybody in the offensive side. Yeah, they could definitely make a little run and scare you. The second-best team in that division, no shame when you have the Kansas City Chiefs, who might be, as Chris says, the best team in the NFL right now. Thanks for watching, homies. Hit subscribe to see all my unbuttoned videos. You get to see me, Ahmed Fareed, all the big player breakdowns, game breakdowns, player interviews, and my film analysis. So please subscribe. Chris Sims Unbuttoned. Peace out.